hoping that those higher ups, that those, those ones that are making the big dollars and making the big decisions aren't worried, as worried as we are, for a good reason. We're staring down a very scary future if our leaders don't act in the national interest soon and not in their own political self-interest. Unfortunately, right now, there's no sign that we're going to do the right thing. I mean, there are little signs of the Tea Party movement and people getting fed up with government spending, but there's still nobody that's actually talking about the need to actually reduce significantly what government spends and, more importantly, what the Federal Reserve prints. If uh, some of those jobs are lost in this, so be it. We're broke. Maybe so be it for him, but not so be it for the people who are losing their jobs. We have the Democrats and the Republicans uh, who are fighting with each other, uh, and that's really a sideshow for expropriating the young. We need to make responsible choices today so our children don't have to make really painful choices tomorrow. The point is that neither Republicans nor Democrats really want to cut the deficit. They want to continue to spend like drunken sailors, because by spending, you in increase your constituency, you make it more likely that you're going to get voted back into office. It's not really the left versus the right, because when the left gets in, they pursue the same policies as the right pursues. You know, president Bush was about as profligate as any president in the nation's history. The incentive is for government to increase spending. However, taxes are extremely unpopular, at least uh, increases in taxes. So they, they need a way to find revenue to fill that gap between the increased spending and taxes, which are very difficult to raise. And the way they do that is to run a deficit financed by printed money or by borrowing from the Chinese, the Japanese, and so on. And both of those lead us to problems. We're not seeing the truth because to see the truth, you have to actually crank the numbers the right way, and then you have to have the government actually talk about this openly, but the government is trying to get itself reelected all the time. They're not interested in the truth. They want to promise something for nothing, because that's how you get elected. Right? If they had real economists that they would tell them the truth, you know, then that doesn't play well on the campaign. When you have to tell your constituents, there's nothing the government can do. There is no miracle cure. The government can't create jobs. The government can't create prosperity. But what it can do is create poverty. It can destroy jobs. Those, that it does you know, very well, unfortunately. Even free market thinkers argue that, that there is a role for government, but their role is limited in such that they should enforce legal binding contracts and enforce property rights. It's too politically toxic. You know, they don't want to talk about cutting government departments or naming you know, what, what spending they're going to reduce. Every politician is afraid uh, to, to mention one thing they'd like to cut because they're afraid they're going to be demonized. Here's the good news. That doesn't have to be our future. That doesn't have to be the country that we leave our children. I am committed uh, to, to making sure that we have real reductions in spending and real changes to the budget process so this problem will never occur again. As long as the politicians can kick the can down the road, that's exactly what they're going to do. Because they're always going to try to get through the next election cycle without a major collapse. Now, at some point, they might finally realize that it's going to collapse anyway, and they might finally do what's right. But as I said, because we would have waited so much longer, uh, doing the right thing is going to involve a lot more pain uh, for a lot more Americans. The retirees are going to be taken care of. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But let me be absolutely clear. I will preserve these health care programs as a promise we make to each other in this society. God bless you, you know, if the government doesn't want to do the right thing because it's too politically unpopular for the people who have to share the bad news with everybody, if instead the government pretends that it can keep all of its promises, that nobody has to lose any money, that the banks don't have to fail, that real estate prices don't have to fall, that everybody's going to get paid all the money they loan the government, that government employees are going to get all their pensions, that everyone's going to get all their Social Security benefits, everybody's going to get all their Medicare benefits. If the government's going to keep all these promises, then nobody will lose any money. But everybody's money will lose its value, and maybe all of its value. That's when you get hyperinflation.